Recently, I've seen a lot of mechanical engineers asking all over the internet about licenses and certifications in a bunch of different areas like product design, manufacturing, and project management. Are they worth the money? Do they actually help you land a first job, move into a new role, or get promoted into management? Do you have to be licensed to become a mechanical engineer? I'll be answering all of these questions in this video, but the short answer is there are hundreds upon thousands of certifications available but most of them are trash that employers don't really care about. So today I'm going to break down all the different certifications that are actually worth considering and can lead to better opportunities and higher pay. I'll organize them into categories, share what the requirements and the costs are, explain who they're most suitable for, and highlight the type of roles and industries that they might help you move into. Whether you're a student trying to stand out, an early career engineer trying to specialize, or an experienced engineer aiming for a big promotion, this video is going to provide a clear framework for deciding where to invest your time and money. So I'll start by saying that whenever possible, have your company or school pay for your certifications. Never pay out of pocket yourself. Companies frequently cover exam fees and training for professional development. Employers capture the benefit directly when you bring new skills to projects and the cost is usually far less less than the productivity or quality gains that you deliver. At my previous job, the company paid for my Flow 3D CFD certification and that credential immediately unlocked higher level analysis work for me without any personal expense. If you're in university, I know some schools do offer discounts or reimburse you in some way, so definitely look into it. As a student, don't worry too much about certifications. Most of your focus should be placed on gaining experience from internships. Certifications are just an added bonus on top of your experience. All right, so the first category of certifications is product design. Now, no mechanical engineering job description that I ever came across explicitly said that you must be certified in a specific CAD or CAE software. But that doesn't mean that companies don't care about certifications. I personally know a lot of candidates who got hired over the competition because they were certified in things like surface modeling and finite element analysis. The key is to have certifications that are relevant to the roles you're applying to. Companies like Dassault Systems, Siemens, and ANSYS all offer structured certification programs for their products like SOLIDWORKS, NX, and Fluent. So for SOLIDWORKS, you have three main levels of certification, the SOLIDWORKS CAD Design Associate, Professional, and Expert. These focus on core modeling skills and test how well you can design and modify parts, assemblies, and drawings, with Associate being the easiest, suitable for students and entry-level engineers, and Expert being the most challenging for engineers adept in advanced modeling techniques. The price is $99 for Associate and Professional, and $149 for Expert. In addition to these, there are specialty certification certifications in areas like sheet metal, weldments, surfacing, mold making, and drawing tools depending on your area of interest. These are great if you're targeting industries that rely on these specific skills. For example, if you're applying for a job in sheet metal fabrication, having the sheet metal certification shows employers you know the best practices. Dassault Systems also offers the same levels of certification for SOLIDWORKS simulation, so associate, professional, and expert and at the same price points. The exams for these will test FEA principles like linear and nonlinear dynamics and buckling, as well as meshing and post-processing results. There's also one for flow simulation, but only professional level is offered. On the Siemens side, you have NX Design at both the associate and professional level. All their certifications cost $158. Associate will focus more on CAD fundamentals like creating and editing solid models and assemblies, while while professional focuses on surface modeling and curved geometry. They also include a wide range of simulation certifications like SimCenter, 3D CAE Associate, and Professional for pre and post processing complex FEA problems and solving using NASTRAN. There's also Flow EFD Associate, which focuses on leveraging CAD embedded CAE to solve CFD problems directly in NX, SolidEdge, CATIA, and Creo. The SimCenter Flow Therm Associate certification 
purification focuses on fluids and thermal management and electronics like heat sinks and smartphones. Lastly is their Sim Center Star CCM CFD Associate and Professional Certifications. Star CCM is their standalone multi-physics CFD software used to predict fluid flow and heat transfer behavior. What sets Siemens apart is that their certifications are more specialized. So if you're aiming at industries like automotive, aerospace, and even companies like Apple, where Siemens software dominates, these certifications carry significant weight. Now for ANSYS, which is probably the cream of the crop in the simulation space, you'll find certifications in linear stress, nonlinear contact analysis, and dynamics using ANSYS Mechanical, LS Dyna for simulating impact mechanics, and brief duration events such as a car collision and fluid flow with ANSYS Fluent. These certifications cost $450 and are highly technical and tend to be more relevant for engineers working in CAE roles doing product testing and validation as well as research and development where advanced simulation is essential. If you plan to pursue a simulation heavy role, ANSYS certifications can make you stand out because they prove that you can handle complex analyses that go far beyond hand calculations. So overall CAD and CAE certifications are most useful in the early to mid stages of your career or if you're targeting a company that heavily uses a specific software ecosystem. They do not replace experience, but they can be the difference between your resume being ignored or noticed. Next, let's talk about manufacturing and process related certifications. These are less about software and more about how engineering connects to the factory floor and organizational processes. One of the most widely recognized certifications is Six Sigma. So basically Six Sigma focuses on quality improvement and process optimization. The certification is structured into levels. So yellow belt costs $100. Green belt has two levels, which costs $159 and $300. For black belt, there's three levels that cost $229 and $300. And the master black belt, which costs $665. Each level gets progressively more advanced, moving from basic problem solving to managing complex projects and leading process improvement teams with higher earning potential. If you're working in industries like aerospace, automotive, medical devices, and high volume manufacturing, Six Sigma is highly valued. It shows employers that you can reduce waste, improve efficiency, and save money, which every company cares about. Many manufacturing and process engineers, project managers, continuous improvement and quality managers, and executives will have one of these certifications. In addition, SME offers a manufacturing associate certification that tests your knowledge across a broad range of manufacturing processes, including machining, welding, forming, and automation. This is great for individuals new to manufacturing who may not possess enough experience for more advanced technical certifications. So it's $250 or $75 if you're a university student. SME also offers the manufacturing engineer certification for those who have a minimum of four years work experience in advanced manufacturing. This certification is perfect if you're in a leadership position or you have supported processes and practices at your organization. These manufacturing related certifications are especially valuable if you want to move beyond design and into operations, supply chain, and quality management. They're also highly transferable between industries because the principles apply whether you're building cars, medical devices, or consumer electronics. Another category worth mentioning is standards and tolerancy. As mechanical engineers, we know a design isn't finished until it's properly documented, and this is where GDNT or geometric dimensioning and tolerancing comes in. So the GDTP certification, which stands for Geometric Dimensioning and Tolerancing Professional, is offered through ASME. It's divided into a technologist and a senior level. The technologist level, which costs $520, is aimed at students and engineers still building their careers and covers symbols, modifiers, and relationships, while the senior level, which costs $623, is for experienced professionals with deep expertise in tolerance calculation, datum feature selection, application of modifiers in feature controls, and composite tolerances. You will need to have five years of experience in the field of GDNT to qualify. You can get certified in the ASME Y14.5 1994 or 2009 standard. I recommend the 2009 edition. This certification is extremely valuable because GDNT is a universal engineering language. If you can communicate tolerance 
purposes and design intent clearly, you can prevent costly manufacturing errors and misinterpretations. Employers know this and a GDTP certification instantly signals that you're competent in one of the most critical aspects of mechanical engineering. If you want to specialize in design for manufacturing or your work involves a lot of supplier collaboration and drawing reviews, then this certification is one of the most practical investments you can make. Next, let's talk about professional licenses. Unlike the certifications we've discussed so far, professional licensure has legal authority. But the million dollar question is, do you need a license to work as a mechanical engineer? I'll speak for the United States since that's where I'm from. In most cases, no, you don't need a license for, I would say about 95% of mechanical engineering roles, whether it's in aerospace, automotive, medical, manufacturing, robotics, or consumer electronics. Employers usually care more about your skills, degree, and experience than a license. However, I'm not saying that the professional engineer or PE license in the US or the charter engineer license in the UK won't be impressive to employers. The professional engineer license is the gold standard and earning one will definitely be a huge plus and get noticed on your resume. The PE license is typically only required in civil, construction, and energy, which allows you to sign off on designs, take legal responsibility for projects, and offer services directly to the public. These licenses aren't quick to earn. They typically require an accredited degree, four years of work experience, and passing the fundamentals of engineering exam, which costs $225 and covers key engineering knowledge ranging from math and engineering ethics to mechanical design and mechanics of materials. You also need to pass the principles and practice of engineering exam, which costs around $400. There's also a license application fee of several hundred dollars that varies by state. So yeah, as you can tell, the PE license requires a lot of time and financial investment, but does carry a high level of prestige. However, I wouldn't recommend pursuing one unless your industry or role explicitly requires it, or you just want to challenge yourself and earn the credential for personal satisfaction. Now, before we continue, one of my favorite platforms that was a game changer in helping me prepare for a career in mechanical engineering was Brilliant, the sponsor of today's video. Brilliant helps you become a better thinker and problem solver with thousands of visual interactive lessons in math, science, programming, data analysis, and AI. Brilliant's lessons build problem solving skills by allowing you to play with concepts. This method is proven to be six times more effective than watching lecture videos. Brilliant's lessons are crafted by professors, researchers, and professionals from MIT, Caltech, Microsoft, and Google, so you learn from the best. Brilliant promotes critical thinking through active learning, not memorization, so you become a better thinker. It also helps develop the habit of daily learning essential for both personal and professional growth. You can level up at home or on the go with Brilliant's interactive bite-sized lessons. One of my favorites is Brilliant's scientific thinking course that teaches you to think like an engineer as you design gear systems, physical structures, electric and digital circuits, and more. To learn for free on Brilliant, go to brilliant.org slash engineering gone wild, scan the QR code on screen, or you can click on the link in the description below. Brilliant's also given our viewers 20% off an annual premium subscription, which gives you unlimited daily access to everything on Brilliant. The last category of certifications we'll talk about is projects and systems. As you move further into your mechanical engineering career, you'll likely find yourself managing projects and leading teams. This is where project management and system certifications come in. One of the most respected certifications is the Project Management Professional or PMP. It's offered by the Project Management Institute and is globally recognized and demonstrates that you can manage projects effectively, handle budget, and keep teams on track across all industries. It costs $655 and requires three years of project management experience. There are also entry-level options like the CAPM or Certified Associate in Project Management that requires no experience, which is more suited for early career engineers and costs $300. For both, you will have to pass an exam that tests your knowledge on predictive, agile, and hybrid approaches to managing a project. For systems engineering, 
Engineering, the International Council on Systems Engineering offers the Systems Engineering Professional Certification. This certification has multiple levels from associate to expert and is particularly valuable in industries like aerospace, defense, and large scale engineering projects where systems thinking is essential. The associate level is suitable for students and junior level engineers with little to no experience, while the expert level requires 20 years of systems engineering experience. Although not mandatory, both PMP and CSCP certifications are excellent for mid to late career engineers who want to step into management and program leadership roles. So to wrap things up, not every certification is worth your time and money. At the end of the day, certifications do not replace experience, but they can help you stand out, prove your skills, and accelerate your career. If you're strategic about which ones you choose, they can absolutely be worth the investment. All right, guys, that's it for today. As always, thank you so much for watching. If you found this video helpful, be sure to check out my video here where I share my problem with mechanical engineering, and I'll see you in the next one. Peace.